So, I'm gonna level with you. I feel kinda guilty. I've covered a lot of things in Warhammer 40k, including Chaos, the Imperium, Orcs, Eldar, and even the Tyranids. I never talked about one of the most outrageous factions in all of Warhammer 40k, only passingly talking about them or talking about one of them. They're exceedingly outrageous in a universe known for its KZ creations, like the existence of a Bolter or Space Marines, or just straight up fungus men that alter reality with their belief in uncanny ways. If you couldn't tell what I'm talking about or you somehow didn't read the title, I'm talking about the metal energy skeletons themselves, the Necrons, who have an integral connection to the universe with them being the very reason why some of the stuff in the universe is the way it is and why it's so horrible. So in this video, let's go over the history of the Necron and how they got to the place they are now, as well as covering how they work on tabletop a little bit. In ancient history, a long time ago, in this galaxy actually, approximately 60 million years ago, the Necrons weren't even Necrons yet. They started out as humanoids that had a star that was so harsh that it beat down on the surface of the planet, causing some pretty gosh darn horrible radiation to bless the skin of the surface of the planet. The radiation was so bad that things like cancers were the main cause of deaths for the denizens on this planet, with the inhabitants we're talking about being called the Necron Tear. This civilization had dynasties, with the leaders of these dynasties being advisors to the one and only king of all the Necron tier, with the most important and longest running king being Cezarac. The Necron tier wanted help with their affliction from these great scientists that was a race of basically frog people that could play the role of God, being able to create completely new organisms, with the race being described as the Old Ones. When the Necron tier finally went and asked for help from the Old Ones, the Old Ones said, uh, nah -uh. why would we give you guys anything? You're asking for immortality and you guys will probably be irresponsible with it. The Necron tier weren't very fond of this honest, truthful explanation of why they didn't deserve any cure to death. So instead, they decided that they would kill each and every Old One for that solution. So the Necron tier, a sickly race, tried to square up against space gods that could make any war machine they possibly wanted. With the Necron tier having some very good weaponry, but not as good as the Old Ones, which didn't really work out in the long run with it kind of backfiring on them. Until, in came the Catan, or Star Gods, or whatever you want to call them. They are quite literally a bunch of old farts, like I mean that. They are farts that would eat up stars by absorbing them, and these things were big issues. Because, you know, you don't want your star to go out on you at any time. Though the Catan started to have physical forms because one interacted with some Necron technologies and allowed them to take a form of an ancient deity. With them being made of living metal. There are quite a few of them, and they spell death for any solar system they're in, but the Necron tier didn't really care about that when the Catan had a solution to all of their problems. With them being able to promise eternal life and to have some secret sauce to deal with the old ones. And that secret was Biotransference, which totally doesn't have any issues. Hey, Cezarac, current ruler of the Necron tier. Yes, you. The starting gods promised you exactly what you wanted. Everything you wanted is now yours. And even when you do it, you get to get the tear out of your species name and just be called Necrons. Go ahead, become a Necron! The Necrons are living metal skeletons with energy that courses through them that usually takes the color of green. Originally, when 40k was first made, they kind of filled the role of Terminators in 40k, with their iconic reanimation protocol initially being dubbed I'll Be Back. They do come with a slight Egyptian twist, though, with them having very Ankh-like symbols and being put in tombs and having floating pyramids, as well as some really awesome names. Their bodies are filled with coolant that's kind of like blood, and they are completely robotic, with their bodies being made out of the same living metal that their vehicles are, having straight-up overpowered weapons and armor, with one of their more iconic things just being a better Death Star. Living Metal was originally created by the Necron tier and made the Necron nigh unstoppable killing machines when they finally became Necrons, taking abuse from any and all deathly blows, while being able to reanimate. This biotransfer stuff is great, right? But it did have a slight little issue where if you went through biotransference, your soul would be eaten by the Catan, with you turning into their mindless drones. Cezarac would go in, get turned into a Necron himself, and be a mindless slave to the Catan, with some of the Necron tier happily joining their king, while others would be dragged in, 
kicking and screaming. The Necrons would fight some of the Old Ones creations like Space Elves or Space Orcs before they became Space Orcs, with them fighting in a war so big and so outrageous that it made modern day 40k look like a petty squabble between children over toys on a playground. Eventually though, some Necron leaders were able to regain their free will. Notice how I only said leaders. The denizens of the Necron tier, the normal people, got turned into unfeeling drones forever, never to be people again. So the Necron leaders all banded together to constrain the Catan by by chopping them apart and putting them in fragments, rebelling against them. They also had to put them in fragments because they were space gods that couldn't die. Then they looked around the galaxy and realized how horrible it was to be alive at that time, or just to fight. Cesarac and Shame went silent, getting what he wanted for him and his people at unspeakable cost, becoming the Silent King. With him now having two Necron monoliths speak for him, which are kind of like these big old machines that shoot lasers and speak for you. Which is an interesting workaround instead of just talking. But I guess damning your race into a bunch of skinless bone men that are now soulless and wish for nothing more than to have their mortality back uh, does make it feel like that sometimes. In modern times, some Necrons started waking up during the Great Crusade. Being able to see humanity and the Emperors start to spread across the galaxy. A galaxy that's obviously the Necrons' property. Because they are the oldest race that lost everything to earn their places as the universe one and only true rulers. Which is kind of like every single race's reason why they are the best and everybody else sucks. The other are doomed the galaxy with a new Chaos God. The Quirks gave themselves acute brain damage that made them become orcs. And humanity just had that whole Horus Heresy thing happen. And don't forget the Age of strife. Humanity really goofed up there. But the entire galaxy will be a clean sweep once all the Necron wake up and unite together under one banner. But, you know, that's not gonna happen anymore. There's some issues and holes in that idea. Ever since the Necrons became Necrons, the Nices were a bit upset at the now ashamed Silent King. With a lot of Necrons all over the galaxy deciding to rule over themselves and their own dynasties. Thinking that they could probably do better than the Silent King, who's a big mess up. There are such dynasties as the Sautek dynasty with Imitech the Stormlord, or the Amunos dynasty with Orokin the Diviner. This guy's cool because he can see the future. Or you could have the dynasty with the one and only bastard Skelly Kleptomaniac, Trazen himself, who comes from the Nihilak dynasty. With each and every one of them having its own unique culture that act differently, sometimes being defensive, shooting higher energy beams, or being better at melee, or other stuff that is designated to them and their allies for lore reasons or for tabletop reasons. The Necrons also have a small little issue besides being a fractured society that hate each other. Because even though they have this impossibly large and destructive firepower. A lot of them just aren't awake yet, and they're just kind of eepy sleepy. It's conveniently never told how many Necron are still to be awakened. Sometimes in stories, it's only a percent of a percent of these skeletons that have woken up in a given story, while others explain that all Necron in the region have awoken. So until someone can figure out the exact numbers that will probably never be disclosed, it's constantly said that a drawback on the Necrons is that their forces are limited. Being some of the strongest around that have low army sizes, the overall attitude of Necron embody the unfeeling calculations of machines, like the Necron are, while also having the disappointment and nostalgia for the times of their prime like boomers have. Back when they used to have souls and mundane flesh. They think everybody is stupid poopy babies and they wouldn't be able to understand the overwhelming destruction and the apocalyptic conflicts of the ancient war in heaven that created the ancient wars and grudges that are mere echoes of the mind-blowing battles that wiped out the old ones. Like everybody else in the galaxy, they hate everybody else because they see them as bumbling idiots. So they usually decide to cleanse them from the face of the galaxy with their energy weapons at any given opportunity. The Necrons are pretty darn scary to think about because when they went to slumber in Tomb Worlds when the galaxy was too hot, they slumbered for somewhere near, you know, 60 million years, with some planets being colonized by maybe orcs or Eldar humanity. So imagine this, you're a human on a forge world, working in factories all day, your life is miserable, your body hurts, your family is sick or dead, and then metal skeletons start popping out of the ground and disintegrate people. And you're one of their victims just because you had the misfortune of being on this planet. And that's partially the horror of the Necron, a completely organized fighting force full of weaponry that rivals gods showing up at any given time. 
And that's not even the worst part either, because I haven't told you about the flayed ones yet. Necron flayed ones act like zombies. They hunger and yearn for flesh again. So whenever they detect a battle of blood in it, flayed ones hop out of unexplained dimensional portals and start running and hacking away at their victim. The Necron flayed ones do have a reason for being this messed up, because they are affected by a virus that caused them to want meat so very much. They do still keep some of their sentience though, but they are manic and evangelical. They'll rip you apart, wear your skin, and try to eat you, but they can't really eat you, so they'll just wear your skin. Even a sect of Necron Flayed One worshipped a giant Chaos Knight draped in skin as a god for some time. The Flayed Ones are terrifying and one of the most horrifying and spooky things in 40k, and I don't like them. I don't, I, 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 like, they're super cool, but please, for the love of the Emperor and maybe even Chaos Gods at this point, never let me encounter one of these things. My favorite Necron is Trace in the Infinite, which I already talked a little bit about. Before the biotransference happened, he was a historian, worried more about cataloging the events of the war in heaven instead of the actual outcomes of the battles. Trazen was a hunchback before the biotransference, walking around with a cane, and even in his new living metal body, he still has to do this. Since he became a Necron, though, he became a bit more of a kleptomaniac, stealing everything and anything that isn't nailed down, and anything that might have some sort of historical significance, not only for the Necron or the Necron here, but also the rest of the galaxy, with Trazen keeping everything in his collection on his homeworld of Solomons. The Necrons also have a beef with the Adeptus Mechanicus more than they do with anybody else, mainly because the Necrons are what the Adeptus Mechanicus try to be, abandoning the weakness of flesh for the cold certainty of steel. The Necron think the Admech are a bunch of dunces because of this though. They truly hate their soulless existence, and seeing anybody trying to emulate it makes them so angry with them hating the idea that the Admech are trying to do what the Necrons accidentally accomplished. Often the Admech show interest in the Necron because they just kinda wanna know how Necron work, but they never really find anything out because working on an alien like that is sort of tech heresy. On tabletop, the Necron are tanky and constantly reanimating armies that are powerful in close range and medium range combat, being able to be real bastard skellies to deal with. Their main real issue is them not having a lot of humans with a giant amount of point costs. But reanimation protocol, which is one of the Necron's passives, makes it so Necron can just kinda get up if they die sometimes. On tabletop, the Silent King is one of the most interesting models you can play with, mainly because his rules change all the time. What I think was the most interesting Silent King we've ever had is when you would place him into a group of units where he would explode on death, destroying everything around him. And now he isn't played much because he's bad and he doesn't really have the power to eviscerate anybody in that radius that hard anymore. Now he mostly plays a normal leader damage support role with his troops being given buffs and other unique passives, making it so they shoot better and last longer in a fight. And that's what I got for Metal Skeleton Egyptians with Space Lasers. Admittedly, this is a very simple and fast coverage of the Necrons as a whole. What do you guys think about Necrons, or do you have any requests for topics on Warhammer 40k? Make sure to tell me in the comments down below. I think the Necrons are, yet again, pretty fun and iconic for Warhammer 40k, embodying the dark, horrible stories while still having some of that action movie cheese and outrageousness that 40k is known for. Till next video, fellas!